In the United States, German automakers are the giants in the luxury car market, and the list of such reputable companies would never be complete without Audi. Audi has built an awe-inspiring reputation over the years when it comes to high-performance sports cars. When you talk about a premium feel, mileage, and overall driving experience, a lot of people would immediately think of Audi. Today, the automobile company is worth over $70 billion, but behind all this success lies a very intriguing story. In this video, we will explore the complex and dark history of the luxury car brand Audi. It all began when Audi was initially operating under the name Auto Union. Together with the other automobile companies that formed this auto union, Audi was the second largest car firm in Germany. During the Second World War that began in 1939, the company transitioned into producing military essentials such as tanks and engines for aircraft and submarines. A 500-page report by the economic historians Rudolf Bach and Martin Kukowski was released after they took a deep dive into the archives of the automobile company. The first thing the report highlights is that the auto union was the only serious competitor to Mercedes-Benz during the 12-year lifespan of the Third Reich. Most importantly, the report claims that auto union, now Volkswagen's luxury marquee Audi, had built its success on the back of human misery and suffering. There's also evidence that the founder of Auto Union, Dr. Richard Brun, could largely be held responsible for the firm's large-scale exploitation of forced labor. After a deal with the SS, over 3,500 inmates from concentration camps were made to work at Audi factories during the Second War. While few adapted to the harsh living and working conditions, the majority could not and died in the process. Another 15,000 were forced to work in auto union plants. They were made to live in unheated barracks and were expected to be sharp for work the following day. There are also rumors that disabled employees were shipped north to the Flossenburg concentration camp where they would be executed. Towards the end of the war, over 600 inmates were sent on a death march to Karlovy Vary, now in the Czech Republic. Notably, more than half even died before they got there. This continued all throughout the war. By 1944, almost all the auto union factories were destroyed by bombs. Before this happened, the company had been able to dismantle the equipment and transport them out of the country to Bavaria. This set the pace for the next phase of the automobile company. First, a look at the past. The story of Audi goes back all the way to the end of the 19th century. August Horch was a brilliant German engineer who kick-started his first car factory in 1889. Before this, it was evident that he was a man with a plan to succeed. He had very humble beginnings. As the son of a poor blacksmith, he had to drop out of school to help his father make ends meet. According to his biography, by the age of 16, he was already working at a wagon factory. At this time, he realized that assertiveness, determination, and a little bit of hard work would get him the life he wanted for himself. He worked until he was 20 and then used his savings to enroll in the Saxon Engineering School. He passed his exams and this landed him a job at the design office of a shipbuilding firm in Leipzig. Sometime in 1895, Horch witnessed something that would change his life forever. On his way home from work, he ran into the first serial model car that was patented by Carl Benz. Automobiles were a relatively new invention and everyone else on the streets watching the moving vehicle was amazed by it, but not Horch. In fact, he looked at this engineering phenomenon and was appalled by it. Dissatisfied, he wrote a letter to Carl Benz, telling him everything he hated about the vehicle, particularly its design and the changes he would make if given the chance. Carl Benz was intrigued by the letter and invited Horch to meet with him. When they met, Carl didn't just hire him, he also offered him a position as the head of production at the factory. Horch held this position well, and the two even developed a mentor and mentee relationship. However, after three years, Horch grew bored. To him, Carl was too conservative and was not willing to go outside the box. On the other hand, Horch was young and wanted to create and develop all his new ideas, but Carl kept him from making headway. These restrictions gave Horch the idea of starting up his own automobile company. He was fortunate to run into a wealthy industrialist who believed in him and came on board as an investor. The company, called August Horch & C, was established by Horch in 1899. By 1910, the company launched its first car. It was the Audi Type A Sport Phaeton, and within a couple of months, it was followed by the Type B. Both cars were a commercial success, particularly because of their use for sporting events. By the start of the 1920s, Audi would become the first German automobile brand to produce a car that was left-hand drive. This car was the Audi Type K. It was so practical that it helped drivers get a better view of oncoming traffic. For this reason, the car dominated the better part of that decade. In 1922, Horch was awarded an honorary doctorate degree by the Technische Universität Braunschweig. 
Because of this, Orce became an elite member of society, constantly attending events. As a result, he took a step back from car design. By 1928, the company was bought by a motor manufacturing company, DKW. Under the new administration, the first car to be released was the DKW F1 in 1939. On the 29th of June 1932, DKW and Audi merged with two other automobile companies to form the Auto Union. This merger led to the creation of the four interlocking rings of the Audi logo that we recognize today. As soon as the Audi logo was launched, it was used on all racing and commercial cars. The fact that the company was able to move its equipment right before the increase in the hostility of the war prevented them from incurring significant losses. The company kickstarted the production of motorcycles and all related components at the new location. The war ended in 1945, and within a couple of years, the company was officially registered again. The first post-war car of the company was the DKW F89P Masterclass. However, by the end of the 50s, the company would sell 88% of its shares to Daimler-Benz AG. We must add that this move did not salvage the company's financial situation as it was intended. As such, in 1964, Auto Union became a part of Volkswagen. When this happened, all the efforts were put into the production of Audi cars as opposed to the motorcycles of the DKW. A few years later in 1968, the Audi 100 was released. This car, which has become something of a legend today, was offered as a two and four door sedan and fastback. The cars that would follow would be inspired by this one and would share similar specifications, such as a longitudinal engine arrangement and a four wheel drive system. These cars would usher Audi into the international market. After gaining popularity in Germany, these cars would be mass exported to America. And in 1972, the compact car Audi 80 was released. It was quickly followed by a more luxurious version, which is the Audi 90. It wouldn't be until 2014 before Audi would recognize its dark past and all that business with using forced labor. To make amends, Audi paid massive amounts into the 3 billion euro fund which the German automobile industry set up in order to compensate Nazi slave workers and their descendants. They were notably one of the last companies that profited during the war to come forward and own up to their past. Competitors like Daimler, BMW and Volkswagen had already come forward with the reparations long before this. We would love to know your thoughts so far. Do leave a comment below. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. We have more videos just like this coming up. So hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of them. The modern era for Audi presents a technological and innovative front. The company's official name was shortened to Audi AG, and from this point, we can say that Audi is in a new dispensation as they have seamlessly transitioned into the luxury market. By 1987, the world had already seen the Audi 80 and then the Audi 90. These were elegant at the time and were the first to set the grandfather's car image. These cars were followed by the Audi V8, which debuted into the upscale market and was innovative enough to compete with the likes of Mercedes-Benz and BMW. By the start of the 2000s, Audi was already set up for success. From this period, sales grew rapidly and have only continued growing to this day. By 2011, Audi had established itself such that it was producing vehicles in seven countries across the world. In 2015, Audi admitted to the fact that more than one million of their cars sold had contributed to the VW emission scandal. Cars such as the A1, the A3, the A4, the A5, the A6 Quattro, the TT, the Q3, the Q5, and the A8L were implicated in the scandal. Audi still recorded an increase in sales despite this, which pretty much brings us to the present day for the brand. Just like its German counterparts in the automobile industry, Audi has successfully established itself as a prestigious brand. With the development of innovative ideas such as diesel technology, aluminum bodies, and the continuously variable transmission, or CVT, Audi has contributed to a resurgence in the American market and success on the racetrack, including seven world records. Records. And Audi is not only known for their reputation on the racetrack, from Legally Blonde to Iron Man, Superman Returns, and the Living Daylights movie of the James Bond franchise, Audi has notably been a Hollywood favorite. This longtime affair with Hollywood has lasted for decades. This serves as an effective product placement strategy that has helped Audi build brand awareness and boost sales. We dare say Audi is bound for a greater success in the future.